Roger Greenberg, Dan Mullen, has failed us too many times. Um, yeah, the biggest thing with Mullen failing Florida. Um, season's lost. It's five wins. You have two wins. Let me look at the stat. I saw it. I couldn't. This was crazy. Florida finishes. They, the only two SEC teams they beat were Vandy and Tennessee. And, oh, by the way, had they not played Tennessee at the beginning of the year, Florida would get smoked by Tennessee now. Dan Mullen is 0-7 in one-score games in the last two seasons. Is 2-9 and nine in the last 11 games against Power 5 teams. Went two and four again in the SEC or against the SEC East this season. Two and four, the only two wins, Vandy and Tennessee. Went <clears throat> went zero and four on the road in the SEC, and that's another thing. Emory Jones had not played well in any game on the road. He didn't play that good against Kentucky. Nothing special. He got benched against LSU when AR fifteen came in. Um, South Carolina was South Carolina was pitiful. The guys quit on Dan Mullen. And then tonight. And all those things have happened this year. Gator, Florida finished with their worst record in the SEC since 1979. If you're old enough to remember, Florida went 0 2 0 10 and 1. Man, crazy to think that Florida went from the LSU game when LSU, you're going into that game, you're 8 and 1. It's it's pretty much an exhibition before Florida plays in the playoff game against, or excuse me, in the SEC championship the following week. LSU has 55 scholarship players with a true freshman quarterback that had never gotten a start. LSU beats Florida. Everybody talks about Marco Wilson and and what happened with that situation. <coughs> situation why Florida lost. Florida lost the game because they weren't prepared. Because Kyle Pitts was healthy enough to be played and did not play. And they didn't have a good game plan. And it was they, they were looking ahead to Alabama. And then the Alabama game happens. Florida has three stops, can't get off the field because of penalties. That's 17 points that Alabama went on to score had Florida gotten those three stops that they should have. Lose the game by six. You, you go to the Oklahoma game, the bowl game. You, you tell the in the press conference, you tell the media – yeah, that's not the same Florida team. The same Florida team that you're now coaching now. First month of the season's good. Defense is, is looks like they're making strides. They had a slow start against Alabama, but then they rallied back. They were physical. Florida averaged just under 400 yards rushing a game. And then, boom, Kentucky happens. LSU happens. Georgia, obviously, is Georgia. And then... All the wheels fell off against South Carolina. You give up more than half a hundred against Sanford and then a night Missouri. Um, yeah, Missouri team that had a great running back, the, the best the best running back in the SEC this season. I wouldn't say great. Forgive me if I, I'm just talking out loud. SEC, Missouri's running back, Beatty. Um, is one of the best in the SEC, and he didn't really get rolling until late in the second half. And Florida did a good job of containing him, but um, he eventually got loose. And um, defense, what was shocking to me, I didn't expect them to play well. They held Missouri to 16 points in the first half, but Florida's offense couldn't do anything. And then um, it was ironic earlier in the week, PFF, Pro Football Focus, rated Damian Pierce – the highest rated running back in college football, that same running back for the University of Florida has only gotten more than eight carries once this season. Let me see how many carries he had today. Because I don't know, he didn't he didn't get much. Let me see. Yeah, and I, I this is something I mentioned um after the Tennessee game. And Damian Pierce wasn't getting the ball at all. I feel like he should, should have been getting the ball more. Um, Damian Pierce finished with seven carries, seven yards. Best running back. Your best tailback. Pretty much had the same carries as Naquan Wright and Malik Davis. That's coaching. <laughs> I 
Mullen in his fourth grade playbook. That's pretty funny. That's pretty clever. Yeah, Jed, I saw this. Joey Ivey, former Florida player, defensive line. He said, um, said this will be good. Mullen's throwing the season. He has a sort of inside info. Yeah. Um, he didn't really he didn't play under Mullen. If he had played under Mullen, I would take it with a little more truth. Um, but I mean, I mean, I'm sure he still talks to some guys that are still on the team, possibly. Um, but yeah, I did see that. Um when Joey Ivy said that um, last week. Kenny says Florida needs to have a coaching change that can recruit and have a killer instinct. You need a head coach that can recruit and you need a staff that needs to recruit. And the next O-line coach that Florida gets needs to be an elite recruiter because Florida needs to make up everything that the offensive line have not been able to do and go out and get big guys um, when it comes to recruiting. Yeah, so you tell the words out of my mouth. What's it matter? Um, only seven touches and, and a touchdown. And, and if you saw the reaction with Pierce when he scored that touchdown, that dude was fired up. That's what happens when you're a really good player and you don't uh, you you don't see the ball much. 